losing five of your kids in a house fire, only to later realize that the fire was a ruse to kidnap them. This is one of the most mysterious disappearances in history. Let's get into the Sauter family case. Christmas Eve 1945 in Fayetteville, West Virginia, George and Jenny Sauter and their nine children were asleep in their home. A fire broke out at around 1 a.m. It was said to be caused by faulty wiring. George, Jenny, and four of the kids made it out, but the five other children did not. The five children all slept in the upstairs bedrooms, and George did everything to get his kids out of the house. He re-entered the house, but the stairs were engulfed in flames. He then tried to go and get his ladder, but it wasn't where it usually was. Someone had moved it. His final attempt to save them was by starting up his coal truck so he could drive them next to the house and get in through the windows. But both of the trucks weren't working despite them working the night before. One of their older kids went to the neighbors to get them to call the police station, but no one picked up. Someone had to go and physically find the fire chief. Despite the fire department only being 2.5 miles away, it took them seven hours to get to the solder house. By the time they got there, the house was ash. There was basically nothing left. It had burned down in 45 minutes, which is a very short period of time for a normal house fire. The site was searched extensively for bones and remains, and none were found. Not a single bone fragment. It was thought at first that maybe the fire was so hot that it fully cremated all the bodies, but further research was done and that was not possible. There would be something left. Some household appliances survived the fire. They were in bad shape, but they survived it. And it was proven that if those had survived, some bone would as well. Death certificates were created for all five children. And to the community, this was one big tragedy. But George and Jenny started realizing that things weren't right. And they started theorizing that this wasn't an accident, but arson, and that their kids had been kidnapped. Now I'm going to tell you some suspicious evidence that kind of backs up their story. First of all, George had the wiring checked only months prior to the fire, and it was checked off and deemed to be safe. Weeks prior to the fire, the kids were saying that they were being watched by these men. There was a weird phone call the night of the fire, which I will get into in part two. The rest of the evidence is insane. I'll post it the moment it's finished. Part two of the missing solder children. An hour before the fire broke out, Jenny was awoken by a phone call. When Jenny picked up, the person on the other end asked for a name that she didn't recognize. So she said, sorry, wrong number. And just as she was going to hang up, there was a strange laugh on the other end of the phone. She also noticed that the lights hadn't been turned off and it was Christmas Eve. So she allowed the kids to stay up late that night, but they told her that they'd turn everything off before going to bed. This light is important because if it was a fire due to faulty electrics, the electrics shouldn't have been working. The family also said that they saw lights on in the house while the fire was burning. And as Jenny was going back to bed that night, she heard something hit the roof and roll. Could that have been what started the fire? It was also found that the phone wire was cut that night, meaning that whoever did it must have done it between when Jenny hung up the phone that night and the hour later when the fire started. Also, no screams or anything were heard from the kids the night of the fire, and you'd think if five kids were in that house, you would hear something. It's important to also note that George, the father, was a big part of the Italian community. There was a big one in that town. He himself had immigrated from Italy. George apparently had very strong political views that a lot of people did not agree with, and he was very vocal with these views, and it really angered people. And apparently, Months before the fire, a salesman knocked on the door and asked George if he wanted to take out life insurance. George said, no thank you, and this salesman straight up said, I don't like your political views, your house is going to burn down, and your kids are going to die. I think we got our guy. It's also important to note that there were tips 
all around where it happened from people saying that they saw the missing solder children. And I don't mean like a few. There were a lot of people claiming to have seen these kids. Another very odd point is that the Sauter family actually contacted the FBI asking for their help. The FBI actually said that they would help if the Fayetteville police station agreed. And the Fayetteville police station declined. The FBI. It's a bit suspicious. George and Jenny followed up on every single tip they got. They would travel hours on a single tip. In 1968, Jenny actually got a letter. It did not have a return address on it, and it was from Kentucky. In this letter held a picture of a man. He had the same hair and features as one of the missing children. They then sent a private detective, and he went missing. And that was it. That was the last lead they ever got. Both George and Jenny passed away without ever knowing the truth. Thanks for watching.